The world of conlang or constructed languages can be a very fun way to learn about linguistics and also a creative exercise on its own or part of some kind of fantasy science fiction project of some kind where you can really invent your own language uh, and doing so leads into uh, so many different areas of linguistics you have to learn the basics of linguistics to understand how to make the language and then seeing how the language it it, it doesn't it takes a lot to uh, make a language actually feel like a real language and by trying this process uh, you really can learn about how real languages work as well. Now here's a fun tool that will create a random language for you. Now you can modify it as much as you like uh, but you can also simply roll the dice and create your own language. So let's see uh, what we can randomly generate. This is called vulgar fantasy language generator. Now the word vulgar can mean rude or crude, but also uh, simply mean common. It comes from the Latin word meaning common or of the ordinary people. And so this is the imaginary language of some imaginary people. All right, well, let's click the button uh, and create a language. So you can use all kinds of uh, customization options here to actually push your language in a certain direction if you want a certain style. For example, if you want it to sound like one of these existing languages, then you can, you can enter one of these languages. It'll make the sounds that sort of approximate that language. And same with uh, the grammar here. You can set some options about how you want your language to be set up, if you have any preferences, word order, noun genders, things like that. But let's just go for a pure random. So here we go. It's as simple as clicking the button to roll the dice. <laughs> okay, so now we have Tartego. Tartegoyen is the language. Now here it explains that this is in the spelling system of this language. Um, and then here we have in the IPA. So when you see the slashes, IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. So this is the alphabet that if you learn it, uh, you can learn how to pronounce sounds in any language of the world and even languages that do not exist. So this in, in the IPA, every sound will match, every letter will match the sound exactly. So you always know how to pronounce. There's never any silent letters or letters that are pronounced differently. You simply pronounce the letters as they're written. So this in the IPA would be Tartego. Or in fact, here I see this marks the stress, so it's Tartego. Okay, welcome to the language of Tartego. Now here we have uh, an example sentence. Um, so here we take this English sentence and then translate. This is the spelling uh, of this imaginary language. And the next line gives the pronunciation, seeing the slashes in, in IPA. And then we have the word order. So this is sort of the literal word by word translation. And he his hat holding stood instead of and he stood holding his hat. So now this would be pronounced Shmadre Shmi Shdote Brid Pilgo Shmad Ogle Shmi Monki Shwoi Klai. Okay, you know, I'm still a learner. I still don't have perfect pronunciation, but you can see with IPA when you, you can know how to pronounce all these sounds, even if it can still be challenging to actually say them <clears throat> and certainly not quite sounding fluent. Um, but that's all there is to it. Now here we have the uh, translator where you can, now here this is in the free version. It's a fairly limited dictionary. 
Um, it's much bigger in the paid version, costs 15 or $20 uh, to get the full version. But here we can say like the dog chases the cat and we translate that. And it is of course, glig tme pen, glig i blaga ratna. And that's how you can see it written uh, in word by word translation. So the, you know, def, the definite determiner, def, dad, that's the, so glig is the, and then tme pen is dog. Um, you know, and explain this is nominative singular, so dog as the subject of the sentence and so on the cat. So it's the dog, the cat, chase, present. So there we have that. And here's uh, some options of different types of words. You can add grammatical words. You can change words with affixes. For example, you can make verbs like future or past. Uh, you can add the different pronouns. And this is always you know, useful if you're using this for some kind of creative project, you can create Name so character or place name. So let's say the hero of this story will be named Bro, <laughs> and and the uh, the the companion of this hero will be named Kengig, and the antagonist of the story, the villain, will be named Wakar. Okay, and this is taking place in the city of Bigre. Okay, so next we have the uh, spelling and phonology. So this is about the sounds, but they also include the writing system. <laughs> Convenient to put them together, although of course they're totally separate. A writing system is always completely separate from the language itself, and you could use different writing systems to write the same language. So here we get the inventory of consonants, and this is a good way to practice IPA, because you can see <clears throat> this is just like a uh, selected version of what you would see in the full IPA chart, International Phonetic Alphabet. So we have a lot of these common uh, sounds. Yeah, nothing too unusual. It's a fairly uh, simple consonant in inventory. Um, these are all essentially sounds that are found in English, although we don't have the tap as a phoneme. This is a dot, but we still uh, see it appear. Um, so a bit of you could think of this as maybe a slightly different R. Whereas this is the r trilled r, uh, but otherwise it's um, very very simple inventory. Surprising to see no s. We have only sh and h, so very limited fricatives here. Um, and but yeah, very simple inventory. Vowels, your standard. Uh, well, I was about to say your standard five vowel set, but it's missing u. So surprisingly, there's only one back vowel O, E, A, O, E, A, I, and O. So O representing all the back vowels. Bit unusual there. Uh, o, of course, and W there. Okay, so next we have the syllable structure. So this suggests what are the possible syllables that can be created. And here, this, this site has a lot of, you know, gives you a lot of good background. This is good if you're studying linguistics that, you know, for each of these sections, you can learn more a background about the, the uh, technical aspects here. Um, so we have the largest possible syllable is CCVC. So that would be like something like span or something. So fairly simple uh, syllable structures. And the stress is on the last syllable. This would be like in French. And here we have, well, spelling, well, this seems a lot like English where this is the sh sound and they also write it with SH. That's Seems a bit close to English. Um, and then th this letter is written R with a little accent on it. So that's their way of saying it's like a special kind of R. Okay, fine. Now what do we have here for the, the grammar? So um, here are some of the main variables that languages can have different answers to. So for one thing we have the subject object verb. So this is S O V language. Mary opened the door would become Mary the door opened. Okay, so uh, that's a very common uh, word order. Adjective before the noun. Um, so the sunny day instead of the day sunny. And postpositions mean 
instead of saying, you know, to the house, you would say the house to. Okay. Different cases or versions of nouns. These are a standard set. Here we see an example of for the dog, you know, to pen. Uh, but when it's the object, like I see a dog, it would be temepena, uh, the dog's uh, tail, temepenin bo, um, and then to the dog uh, would be temepenerke. Okay. I mean, there's always a point where you, you start to think that, you know, this looks like a bunch of random nonsense, which, you know, it kind of is. This is a randomly generated language. Uh, it's very silly. Uh, you may have already reached that point long ago, uh, but uh, you know this is—you you never know what is going to uh, be uh, randomly generated here. Now here we have the plural to Oh, so we actually have this sort of reduplication in the plural. So the singular is temepen, and the plural is temetemepen. Uh, the gleeg and drop. I mean, that's looking a little bit random. Here are some random rules. Here we have the set of pronouns for your language. So you have osh uh, is I, um, you know, and ret is you. Um, my key and so on. Full set, all randomly generated for your enjoyment. Um, different tenses of the verb. So I, I learned is de lo. I learned yesterday is de lo op. And future is de log. Okay. And we have I have learned is de lo ap. Finally, we can count. Oh, and of course, base 20 numbering system. Uh, so that's another one of the popular numbering systems. Uh, we, of course, are used to base 10. But since People have 10 fingers and 10 toes. It's not unreasonable that many languages have a 20 base system. And you can still see some remnants of this in English with something like a score meaning 20. And you see it in French with, with 80 being 80, 420, and so on. So here we count no, spe, klet, hek, ta, shui, kolko, e, mo, koi. Looking a little random there. We have these different types of uh, words that you can add. Derivational morphology means pieces that you add to words to create other words. Um, it's just like you say quick and quickly. You can have here, they have like you have et in order to make that adverb and so on. Then you get to a dictionary. Uh, and this is the miniature dictionary of only a few words and then the you get many more times, you know, in the, in, in the paid version, uh, you can get a full dictionary. You can also edit your dictionary. Um, here's all your words created for you. And that's the idea. So this is a, it's, it's a fun tool to use to see what's possible in different languages. And, um, you also see the limits of where real languages have so much more richness than a randomly generated language can have. There's so many little details that really make a language living. And that's why it's not easy to create an artificial language, a constructed language that really has a natural language feel because there's so much depth, there's so much nuance and detail that goes into a real language through the thousands, millions of speakers over generations speaking that language that develop the full richness of the language. And this is just rolling the dice, uh, applying some statistics and making a random language. But as a tool, it's certainly something that can be a lot of fun and also lead to some interesting insights uh, about how languages work.